I'm Clint Carney from System Sin, and today we're going to take another inexpensive Halloween mask and turn it into a cool display piece. Stick around. Okay, so today we're going to take another inexpensive mask that I got off of Amazon.com and see if we can do something pretty cool with it. This one I bought for $17.99. Uh, the photos of it looked really cool, but if you've ever bought a cheap mask off Amazon before, you know that that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be cool once you open it up. So uh, let's check it out and see what it looks like. Okay. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> All right, here we go. All right, all right. Yeah, let me tell you, it looked way cooler on the website than it does right now. Obviously, this is folded, so we'll have to fix that up. Um, you know, but the sculpture is really cool. Uh, the latex is uh, reasonably thick. It does have some crazy fold marks in it. It's going to need a lot of work. But what I thought of when I saw this particular mask... I thought this would make a really cool conversion into the Tar Man zombie from Return of the Living Dead. If you haven't seen Return of the Living Dead, I highly recommend it. This is my first Halloween recommendation for today's video. Return of the Living Dead, great zombie movie from 1985, I believe. And one of my favorite zombies of all time, if not my favorite zombie of all time, is the Tar Man zombie from this film designed by William Stout. And uh, it's just such a great zombie. I have, I think, three other Tar Man masks floating around my place here. Uh, but you can never have too many. So I'm going to attempt to turn this dude into a cool uh, Tar Man mask. I'm going to leave um, links in the description below to this mask and all the supplies that I use in case you want to... Uh, try making one yourself. Right before we get into it, I just want to give you one more Halloween recommendation, and that is the film Dry Blood. And the reason I'm recommending this is this is the film that me and my friends made. Um, we made it up a few years ago. It came out from uh, Dread and Epic Pictures. This is the uh, DVD case, and then the Blu-ray has a uh, reversible cover image, so you can get this cover on the Blu-ray or reverse it, and here's the skull. On that side, this is the, if you're Canadian and watching, this is the Canadian version. It has this pretty sweet slipcase. Let's try it on, see how it fits. Yeah. Okay. Here it is. Oh, I almost forgot. One more thing. I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who recently subscribed to my YouTube channel. It really means a lot. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do so. Hit the notification bell so you get updated on the latest videos because many more to come. Thanks so much. Let's, uh, let's make a zombie. The first thing that you'll want to do is to reshape the mask to get rid of the creases and fold marks. So I'm heating it up with a blow dryer. I have it on a styrofoam head form, and then I'm also taking plastic grocery bags and stuffing them in between the styrofoam head and the mask as I heat it up just to uh, help build out the shape. Now that I got the form of the mask down, I need to take it outside and I'm going to spray it with a material called Plasti Dip, and you can buy this at any hardware store. I got mine at Home Depot, and I got two colors of Plasti Dip, a black and a white color, and when we bring the mask back inside, you'll see exactly how that turned out. I wanted to keep all of the materials for this particular build strictly limited to things that anyone could buy at an arts and crafts store and a hardware store. Uh, that way it's more accessible. So I'm not going to be foam filling this one. I'm just keeping it super easy uh, so that anyone who's watching can easily follow along at home regardless of your skill level. While the Plasti Dip is drying, I need to make some eyeballs for Tar Man because his big bulgy blue eyes is one of his signature traits. A real quick and easy way to make nice looking eyeballs is to use Sculpey. I use original Sculpey because it's already white. It's pretty inexpensive. I believe it's about $10 for a box, which will make you a gazillion eyeballs. You're going to start by uh, getting two equal parts of clay so that you have the same size eyeballs and you just roll them into balls. And as you have uh, 
as you see little fold lines or creases in the clay, just smooth it out with your thumb and then re-roll it again in between your hands until you have two spheres. I put those right on a uh, baking sheet that I popped into my toaster oven. Uh, it set it to 275 degrees, bake it for 30 minutes, and then let it cool for about an hour, and you are good to go. So we have our eyeballs freshly toasted. Now they are very solid and hard. And uh, we're going to make them look uh, more like eyeballs. So the materials that I use here, I've got some acrylic paint. I've got uh, a pencil, some paint brushes, a red uh, rollerball marker from, uh, I believe that I just got that at Office Depot, and then some water and some masking tape. Uh, so we don't want the eyeballs rolling around while we're painting them, so I'm just going to lay out some masking tape here and uh, stick the eyeballs to it so that they don't roll around. I'm using the cap from a chapstick just to uh, trace around with a pencil and get the iris because that's right about the right size. And then I'm going to take some blue and some white paint and uh, kind of create like a uh, lighter blue color to go with the darker blue. And I start with the dark blue and I work my way around the rim of the iris uh, starting from the outside, pulling the paint inward. And I do that on each eyeball. And then uh, I take some of the lighter blue that we just mixed up and uh, put a few streaks of that inside as well. And then what I'm going to do after that is mix up some yellow paint with a little bit of the light blue and just add a little touch of that into the center of the eye, just enough to where it would extend past the pupil, just to break up the color and make it look a little more dynamic. Then I'm going to take some black paint Try to find the center of the iris and using a circular motion, just try to put the pupils in place. Make sure they're even and try to get them as close to the center as possible. Then I took a little bit more of that black, mix it with a little bit of the blue just to create a darker blue. And I just go and outline the iris one more time with that just to uh, make the eye color pop that much more. Now I'm taking the red rollerball pen and just making these squiggly, almost tree branch like lines to create the veins. We're never going to see the back of the eyeball. So I'm just working from the middle up and then uh, this red ink, you can just go ahead and smear it. Uh, with your finger if you want because um, it's not really going to completely dry on this material and that kind of gives it a broken blood vessel look. Now I'm taking this five minute epoxy. Again, you can get this at any craft store or hardware store. It's a two part mixture. You just mix the two parts together and then it sets up in about five minutes uh, as the name would imply. And I just put a big gob of that in the middle and work my way down around over the sides. Again, we're never going to see the back, so I'm not concerned with that. I'm just making sure that the top all the way to the middle of the eyes is covered. That's all you have to do on there. And then we get some pretty cool eyes. And here is the mask now that the Plasti Dip has dried. You can see I sprayed the bottom black and the very top white. And then I just did a light dusting of the white over the transition between the two colors just to create that gradient. Uh, so now I line up the eyeballs, make sure that they're going to fit in there. I had to take some scissors just to trim those eye sockets a little more. And I just kind of pop them in place. Now I'm using hot glue to cement those eyeballs in place. And once the hot glue dries, I'll be able to paint right over the top of that. Since I'm hot gluing this in place, of course, this mask is going to be just for display to be part of my collection. Now I'm taking some acrylic paint and just painting white onto the teeth, just as a uh, starting base color. This is not going to be a wearable mask, so I don't have to worry about the latex flexing and the acrylic paint chipping off. Then I'm taking some yellow and just putting that at the roots of each tooth, kind of uh, just making him look like he's got some plaque. The teeth are still pretty bright at this point, but we're going to knock down that color momentarily. And here I am taking uh, some black paint and then just covering up the glue gun glue. It's all pretty basic. This paint job actually uh, doesn't uh, take a lot of skill. If you've never painted anything before, you could still do this exact same paint job. It's very easy to do. Now I'm taking some brown paint. I believe this is burnt umber specifically and I'm putting a lot of water into the paint mixture. I want it very thin and I'm just washing this brown umber paint all over the mask. 
you'll see up at top in the white area, I'm also using a paper towel to just dab up some of the excess. I want to make this nice and subtle, this transition between the two colors. And then I just take the burnt umber and I go over basically the entire mask. <laughs> this is a very thin coat because it's watered down, but it's enough to make the details pop out and give him a really cool look. I even go over the teeth with the burnt umber just to uh, dull out the white and I go over the eyeballs a little bit with it, but then I take a paper towel and I wipe off the center of the eyeballs just to keep those nice and white, but I want that aged look from the burnt umber going out on the sides. And then the last thing I'm gonna do here is just take more of the burnt umber and paint in some of those drips that are up top that were previously just covered by the white plastic dip just to make those drips still look like they're his gooey, gnarly flesh. Here he is. I think he turned out pretty cool. Not bad for a 1799 mask. Again, if you want to try replicating this project yourself, check out the links in the description of the video. Please be sure to like this video, comment, uh, subscribe, click the notification bell, all that stuff. It really helps out the channel. I appreciate you all. Thank you for watching and have a happy Halloween.